What does the Bible say about tattoos? And should Christians see tattoos as a red flag that God is warning them not to date this person who has these tattoos? Here are four points to consider. Number one, decide what you believe the Bible says about tattoos. The reason I'm emphasizing the phrase, decide what you believe the Bible says about tattoos, is because Christians read the Bible looking for information on this topic of tattoos and interpret the relevant scriptures very differently. And so we all need to assess what the Bible actually says and make our own conclusions. The New Testament doesn't say anything directly about tattoos. There's a lot of principles we need to consider, which I'll talk about in the next point. The most relevant Old Testament passage is Leviticus 19, verse 28. Here's what gotquestions.org said about this Bible verse. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. The reason for the prohibition of tattoos in this passage is not stated, but it is likely that tattooing was a pagan practice connected with idolatry and superstition. It was probably common for the pagans to mark their skin with the name of a false god or with a symbol honoring some idol. God demands that his children be different, as he reminded them in the same verse, I am the Lord. The Israelites belonged to him. They were his workmanship, and they should not bear the name of a false god on their bodies. While New Testament believers are not under the Mosaic law, we can take from this command the principle that if a Christian chooses to get a tattoo, it should never be for superstitious reasons or to promote worldly philosophy. The bottom line is that getting a tattoo is not a sin per se. It is a matter of Christian freedom and should be guided by biblical principles and rooted in love. Number two, Decide what this specific tattoo says about this person who has that tattoo. If you clicked on this video hoping for a direct answer from me about tattoos, here it is. Me personally, I don't think the Bible directly forbids tattoos. So I'm not personally against tattoos and I don't think they're a sin. However, I do think there are some really important, relevant principles in the Bible that we should consider when thinking about tattoos. For example, the Bible consistently points to the importance of having healthy motives behind every action. The decision to get a tattoo, therefore, should be done with a pure motive. The Bible states our motives and actions should be rooted in a desire to honor the Lord with our bodies as we reject conformity to the world and seek to be renewed in Christ. Thus, getting a tattoo should be done under this principle. A tattoo should not be pursued for the purpose of getting social status, to make oneself look better by worldly standards, or to fit in with the world. With all that said, the Bible is also clear that we are not able to judge each other's motives, nor should we try. Only God can actually look into a person's heart and decide if their motives are good or bad. Therefore, the Bible tells us as Christians to look at the external actions and behaviors and words of people because that is a direct expression of what is going on in someone's heart. Therefore, when it comes to other people's tattoos and your concern about dating someone with a tattoo, the tattoo itself has a lot more to do with your decision-making process than just whether or not they have a tattoo. In other words, all tattoos are not created equal. What does this tattoo actually say? What do the words in this tattoo actually mean? Is it expressing some new age belief that, you know, this shows that this person isn't really passionate about Christ? Is it something that bears an image that's just really dishonoring to the Lord and sinful? Or is it something that this person did with a spiritual significance that they wanted to do to please God? These are questions that sometimes we can't answer just by looking at the tattoo. And so really you just need to ask the person, hey, what does your tattoo mean and why did you get it? We shouldn't do this to judge them, but if you're thinking about getting into a relationship with this person, it's something you may want to ask them. Number three. If these tattoos are from this person's previous season of life when they weren't walking with Christ, we should assess the person for who they are now rather than for who they were when they got this tattoo. Some people get tattoos and they love them for life. 
Other people get tattoos and they regret their decision. If someone has a distasteful tattoo or even one that's outright sinful because it dishonors Christ in some way, but they have since repented of that past season of life, I believe the best course of action is to see beyond this tattoo and accept this person for who God has made them now by his grace rather than judging them forever by their past. All Christians were once dead in their trespasses before becoming alive by the mercy of God. And number four, make the decision you feel led to make in faith. For me personally, I don't see tattoos as a red flag and I don't think the Bible outright forbids them. I'm more interested in assessing someone's character, the behavior, and if they're honestly walking with Christ and bearing the fruits of the Spirit. However, you need to make that decision for yourself. And we need to make our decisions based in faith because anything not done in faith is sin. So I would encourage everyone to read the whole passage in Romans 14. For the sake of time, however, here's a few passages in Romans 14 that I think are particularly helpful to remember when talking about this topic of tattoos. Romans 14, 4 says, who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. Romans 14, 22 through 23 states, the faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is commanded if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. I really want to hear your thoughts about this topic in the comment section below. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com and until next time, God bless.